My 13-year-old acts like a puppy again. Almost overnight, she's a different dog. Perfect poops. When people switch their dog's food to the farmer's dog, the effects can seem like magic. But there's no magic involved. It's simply real meat and vegetables with all the nutrients dogs need, instead of highly processed pellets. No tricks, just smarter, healthier pet food delivered in packs portioned for your dog. It's amazing what real food can do. Get 50% off your first order at thefarmersdog.com slash nomagic50. So I'm a father of what? I gotta find a babysitter. I found care.com and I was blown away. Through the platform, I was able to find local and experienced candidates along with their reviews and rates, which were way more affordable than I anticipated. Care.com really put me at ease knowing that they were all required to go through a background check. If you're like me and you need to find someone reliable for your child care necessities, check out care.com. Find the ideal sitters for your child care needs. Hello everyone and welcome to the Friday Walkthrough. I'm Cole Carmody alongside of Monty Spiller. It is week four of K-State's season. Week three did not go very hot for the Cats. We'll talk about that. We'll get into week four's matchup with the Oklahoma Sooners. But first, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button on YouTube. Make sure you are subscribing to Go Power Cat. And now it is time for me to tell you that we are sponsored by the Part-Time Beverage Company. The first half is sponsored by Club Special. The second half is sponsored by Cape Cod. Where do we even begin after last week's just debacle of the game? First of all, let me say, our predictions were not even close to being right. Not that anybody predicted this. <laughs> You're right. Our predictions, you and I both were way off. Um, yeah. Where do we start? <laughs> I think the only place to start with, 10 points. I mean, it's hard to win a game no matter who you play when you only score 10 points. That's the big talking point um, uh, around Manhattan this week. And right. We, we had a press conference with Chris Kleiman on Tuesday, and, you know, he, he basically said, look, like, we've got to be better on offense, and, you know, we'll get down into some of that stuff. But, I mean, uh, I just felt like the offense, that's that's the biggest story to me this week ahead of the Oklahoma game. Yeah, watching the game, you know, Saturday I felt like our offense was playing not to lose. And it's one of those things where uh, they weren't explosive. Guys weren't trying to make the big plays. I'm not saying trying to make – they didn't have that – same off about them. Mm-hmm. You know, the offense looks stagnant. And the thing that stood out to me, the offensive line, especially in the run game, and we praised the offensive line coming into the season. And I know they still have the capability to be great, but Tulane's D line controlled the line of scrimmage and they bottled up Deuce. Yeah. That yeah. was that was yeah. that was a big that was a big part of the game. Yeah. I mean, and Chris Clement talked about that as well. It's like when you depend upon that offensive line yeah. and you can't get those explosive plays, it's hard to do much of anything. And we'll talk about Adrian Martinez. We'll talk about the play calling and stuff. But I think that's a good place to start with the offense is I feel like they have to find a way to get that run game going. Because against Tulane, there was just absolutely nothing there. And, and I asked Cooper Bieber, we had a chance to talk. I said, you know, you guys didn't rotate as much. That's something we've seen K-State do is they mm-hmm. rotate linemen in a lot. They didn't do that. And I wonder if... Maybe that had an impact because it was so hot. I know KT Loveston was out there. He cramped up a little bit. To me, you get fresh defensive linemen for Tulane rotating in and out. Mm -hmm. Offensive linemen, you don't get to rotate that much. I feel like when you're used to that, that had to have played a factor. Yeah, you're probably right. And it's one of those things, looking at the game, (laughs) makes you wonder, going back to preparation of the week, did K-State see something on film that they thought they could take advantage of, they thought we had a better – uh, chance to be successful, and if so, when we did get to the game and we weren't successful, were there attempts to make um, mo- modifications, make changes, make adjustments? And if so, were there adjustments made, and were they not successful? Because honestly, from the blind eye and from football eye, mm-hmm. not a lot, not a lot was successful. No, there, so, there was nothing. And and I don't know if the heat played a part, but you would think a K State coach team would be well conditioned, especially playing in Manhattan, knowing the how Kansas well it can be. So I hate to think of that as a reason, but I don't know the answers to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's at this point, you know, you're just looking for answers, yeah. right? I'm sure K State fans are doing the same thing, but I think it's important to go back and look at that game and use it as a learning, as a learning tool because there's going to be games like that where K State is not going to be able to do things offensively. And, you know, They've got. They just have to keep continuing to grind away. Look, we saw it against Missouri. It was kind of the same way. Yeah. They really weren't doing anything in the first half, and then they get a special teams play, 
and then they start to bust some long runs. Right. It felt like they never got that big play, and Chris Kleiman talked about it. Explosive plays are important. There was none of that against Tulane. Yeah, you're right. And as and, and me as a fan, and and and, uh, and you said that I I was just waiting for an exp- explosive play to happen, and waiting, and then halftime happened, and still waiting. And actually, right before half, you know, the play to um K Warner, it was a great throw, even better catch. But it was pressed, and it was something that we felt like if we did get any points at that point uh, in the game, we're in trouble. Mm-hmm. And so, um, that but the explosive plays never came. And when we did get a good play, a penalty hurt us, or a missed block, or a missed assignment. So it was it was just a negative day altogether for the offense. Let me ask you about this because in the first half, still very much a game, right? K State, yeah. they're they're tied, it's ten to ten, I believe, or it's seven to seven, or K State's up. You know, either way, it's a close game. Mm-hmm. And Daniel Green gets the interception yep. right before halftime, takes it all the way down inside the red zone. K State has an opportunity to score a touchdown. If they score a touchdown, they'll be up by seven. They get the ball coming back. Instead, they kick a field goal. They're up 10 to seven at halftime. This is what I, I can specifically remember watching the game in the press box, turning to Fitz and saying, if they score a touchdown, they can put this game away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they didn't score a touchdown. <laughs> I'm curious, you know, there was a shovel pass that was called, then there was a, a play where Adrian Martinez kind of threw the ball away. Is there, if you're as a coach, as a former player, is there any temptation to forget trying to get, you know, yards to get us closer to kick a field goal? Is there any thought that we're going to score a touchdown here no matter what? Yeah, you have to have I think you have to have that attitude. And, and I, I get you don't want to seem desperate, especially at a home game. You're the favorite team. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You know, trick play, reverse, something. You got to throw something out there to give the guys a spark, to give us a chance to get a lead. And I feel like that's, you know, you have to have a sense of urgency about it. And we you waited and waited and nothing happened. And so – yeah, absolutely. You have to find a way to kickstart the offense because when you get the opportunity to go up by seven and half and then get the ball coming out, that's a game changer. Mm-hmm. And that's something you have to, to, to be aware of. And I'm not saying that they didn't attempt to, but it never happened. Mm-hmm. There yeah. was there was none of that creativity I felt like we'd been waiting for. Yeah, yeah. And, we, and you and I had talked. Maybe they're trying to hold stuff back for Oklahoma. I don't necessarily know if – in the second half of that game, Colin Klein was trying to hold stuff back for Oklahoma. It was almost one of those things to where I felt like he was like, well, we, we didn't expect to have to run this play. Yeah. We didn't practice it. So now we're stuck with our base stuff. Yeah. And how do we figure it out? I mean, the shovel pass is, is something that, you know, I think has worked great for teams in the past, but it didn't work on Saturday, no. right? It didn't work. Um, we'll specifically talk about that third, those third and fourth and short calls <laughs> here in a minute. But I mean, when things aren't working, yeah. you have to switch it up and, I'm not sure that there was much of that. It wasn't. And and, and given the, the coaching staff credit, and, and I understand, you know, a lot of times when you get good, you get good at doing what you do. And you don't deviate from what you do based on not having success right away. So on the flip side, I understand what Coach Klein and what Coach Klein was doing. You know, you do you, and if they're good enough to stop you, kudos to them. But most teams have the attitude, we're better than you. We're going to do what we do what we do, and we're going to be successful. Obviously, K-State didn't have success like we wanted to. Going into this week, who knows? I'm not sure what approach they'll take. We'll see. But um, it's one of those things where, yeah, you have to, I feel like, in a game going into Oklahoma week, you can't lose to Tulane. But we did, and it is what it is, and it happened. So, like I said before, we will see what happens moving forward. You just got to pick it up and move forward. Yeah. yeah I, I think yeah. if you're K-State, that's what you got to do. But, I mean, again, it's important to use this, yeah. I feel like. And, and I feel like the coaches are going to learn just as much from this game as the players. I mean, it's you got to take a look in the mirror, too, and reflect and say, what did we do that we could have done better? Absolutely. And, and again, this is where I want to bring this up, that third and four, those third and fourth and short calls. Hmm. Very interesting, right? I mean, even <laughs> it's easy to look back and say, hey, they should have done this. They shouldn't have done this. Yeah. But to me, I just feel like sometimes people make football too complicated. Yeah, it's fourth and one. The very first, the very first fourth down, K State has. They quarterback sneak Adrian Martinez. He gets a first down. Yes, I want to say there was two or three other fourth downs that were fourth and one or fourth and two, and they didn't do anything like that. They line up in the shotgun. They try and run the read option. They try and run the the speedo, the speed option, it right. do, and it doesn't work. And to me, you know, I, I feel like hey. You got a first down on the quarterback sneak. Go back to it, yeah. Why would you not go back to it? A lot of variables play into that. Cause, and I get it. Cause, like sometimes coaches outthink themselves. Mm-hmm. And coaches 
uh, you know, in the football world, we understand, but coaches are very intelligent people. And like you said, they look at all, uh, every aspect of the game. We had success on the fourth and one when Martinez uh, QB snake the ball. But then I guarantee Missouri's coaches are up in the box saying, okay, this is fourth and one again. They're probably coming back to the quarterback sneak, so we're going to call this defense to stop it. I'm guaranteeing Colin probably saying, hey, they're going to line up for this way to stop it. We're going to counter it with this. It backfired. You know, it's one of those things where uh, you have to say sometimes, we're going to beat you. And and if you stop us here, good for you. But it comes to a point where our guys are better than yours. Tulane guys are better than ours that day, and unfortunately, they got the win because of it. And it's almost like you said earlier: it's we're going to line our st- line up, do our stuff. Yeah. And if you stop it, congratulations. It was almost one of those things where maybe Colin Klein was thinking, okay, well, w- paralysis by analysis, <laughs> right? You know, that's kind of I felt like what was going on. But you know, it's be impossible to you can't put all of this on the coaching staff. No, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, oh, yeah. um, another hot topic has been Adrian Martinez and his play in the game. And you know, I, I, I'm fully of the belief that Adrian Martinez has. Sw- swung from the quote-unquote turnover-prone quarterback at Nebraska mm-hmm. to being too conservative at K-State. And I think, you know, you ask him that, we've talked to him about it, and he acknowledges that yeah. that's true. So it's trying to find that happy medium. But against Oklahoma, I almost wonder if there is no happy medium. You need to push the ball down the field. You've got to try and make big plays because the quarterback that played against Tulane, the quarterback that was constantly checking the ball down, mm-hmm. That's not going to win you any games in the Big 12. Yeah, he was playing not to lose, you know, without a doubt. Anybody who watched the game, a fan of Tulane, a fan of K-State, um, he was playing not to lose. And like you said, I, I guarantee in the back of his head he was thinking, don't turn the ball over because going into a big game like Oklahoma, he shouldn't be thinking of head. But the fans, no matter who you are, you're going to read the media. You're going to hear what people say about you. You could try to block it out, but you're human. And that's, just, that's part of being a quarterback at a major school and a major conference. But he played not to lose, and he didn't make the big plays. And think about it. He needs to go into Oklahoma where the attitude is, I'm throwing around the yard. If I get an interception, so be it. I come back again and, and continue going because you have to be competitive. If you look at some of the best quarterbacks that have came out of the Big 12, they have multiple interceptions, but they also have multiple touchdowns and multiple wins mm-hmm. because they aren't afraid to uh, make a play and put the ball in a position to, uh, to let your, your best players go score touchdowns, and that's the attitude he has to have moving forward. One thing we didn't see against Tulane very much was the quarterback run game. Yeah. And and to me, and, and I've gone back and forth on this, but – I almost wonder if Colin Klein knows the type of toll that it takes on a quarterback's body, mm-hmm. and he's shying away from that. You yeah. know, because he's you know he's a good coach. He doesn't he doesn't want to uh, ruffle the feathers of his players, so mm-hmm. to speak. He's almost not calling those quarterback runs. And I think Adrian Martinez was so successful at Nebraska as being a running quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yes, you want Adrian Martinez to be a passing first quarterback, but I feel like just. Getting that extra blocker. I mean, how many times have we seen Deuce Vaughn be a lead blocker yeah. and just obliterate somebody, yeah. right? I mean, getting that extra blocker is huge. I feel like part of the reason KCA struggled offensively against Tulane is there was just no threat of the quarterback run game. No, you're right. You're right. And they could they focus in on Deuce. And when Deuce went out and DJ came in, um, he had success. And I'm not saying that he's a better back than Deuce. Mm-hmm. That's crazy right now. And none against the young man. His time will come. But it, it was almost like they – once Deuce was taken out, Tulane's defense, okay, we can't really focus on one guy now. We got to focus on other guys, and they had a little more success. But like you said, yeah, you have to put them in the run game because that does open up other options as well. Because I felt like Tulane basically didn't feel threatened by our deep game. Mm-hmm. They didn't feel threatened by the QB run game. And every time Deuce got the ball, he was getting hit in the backyard, I mean, in the back uh, backfield, or as soon as he got the ball two or three yards later, he was getting hit time after time, and they were good athletes. I'm not taking anything away from Tulane. Their coach did a great job of getting them prepared, and they played a good game. But you have to – you know, it's a Big 12 time. You can't be conservative. You have to go out and show everything, including running Martinez. And he he has the ability. We have to use him. One thing we haven't even talked about at all as we wind down here in the first half is the defense. (laughs) I mean – I thought the defense played great. They did. They kept us in the game. Yeah. They kept the defense did their job. Um, two turnovers, two interceptions, potentially three, one that was dropped mm-hmm. uh, late, but a great break on the ball. They did a great job of keeping us in the game. They were fast. They were physical. Tulane had a, a, a good offense. Their quarterback was athletic, and we kept them in check for the most of the game. And people f- fail to forget, you know, um, we had them in fourth down situations multiple times. They had success. We didn't. And that kind of made a big deal about the game as far as the score later in the, in the game. But our defense continues to play well. You know, looking at the first three games, 
uh, outside of the late touchdown that Missouri scored and we shut out South Dakota, we'd given up 20 points. And Impressive. if you look at that, for, for a Division One school that played three quality opponents to give up 20 points total – outside of the, the late score, score by Missouri, that's impressive. Mm, it is, and they're going to need that defense. <laughs> I mean, they're going to need that defense the rest of the season. But, again, I'm of the belief that if this defense can continue to play at the level they're yeah. playing at, they're going to be in every single game they play. And, honestly, does the loss to Tulane suck? Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Does it take some wind out of your sails? Sure it does. But if you go down at Oklahoma and you win, it's completely. we're talking about a completely different team um, coming up. The, the next time we, we talk about this K-State football team. That's going to do it for the first half. We'll talk more about that Oklahoma game in the second half, so stay tuned for that. We are sponsored by the Part-Time Beverage Company, and we will be right back after this short break. JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab-created or earth-created. James Allen has over 200,000 conflict-free stones. Then you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real-time diamond consultations available where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com code podcast. That's jamesallen.com code podcast. When the whole family comes together to watch the game, nobody wants to miss a second of the action to run to the grocery store. With Instacart, you can get all your weekly groceries in as fast as an hour. Less time shopping means more game time. Let's go. Visit instacart.com to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional terms apply. Welcome back to the Friday Walkthrough. I'm Cole Carmody alongside Monty Spiller as we get you set for K-State and Oklahoma. We are sponsored by the Part-Time Beverage Company. First half is sponsored by Club Special. This half is sponsored by Cape Cod. Make sure you're hitting subscribe on the YouTube button, subscribing wherever you get, wherever you get your podcast, and subscribing to GoPowerCat.com as well. Oklahoma, K-State, Brent Venables faces his alma mater, your former coach, there's so many storylines for this game. It really stinks that both teams aren't 3-0. and Yeah. But here we are, and uh, it's going to be a great game. I, there, there's a lot to talk about, and we have a lot to get into, but I just want to start with this. What is this? This is a rivalry, right? It, it is. There, there's, I, I, I hate using the word. I hate using the word hate. Um, there's a hatred, yeah. uh, and, and, there, and there's a lot of things that go way back. When K-State wasn't good, Oklahoma was, then we got good. And, and then with Bob Stoops being a coach here, then the head coach of Oklahoma, and now Brett Venables, there's a lot of storylines. So, yeah, there is, I would call it a rivalry, absolutely, yeah. There's there's so many interchangeable, intertwisting things between K-State and Oklahoma. I think people haven't, you know, people maybe not might not realize this, K State is four and six in the last ten games against Oklahoma. Uh-huh. Seven of the ten games have been decided by ten points or less. Yep. So for people who think this is going to be a blowout, no, I don't think this is going to be a blowout. First of all, seven out of the last ten games, it's come down to ten points or less. That's two possessions. We could very well see that happen. Um, and people, you know, a lot of people, K State fans, might even be thinking this is going to be a blowout. And we've seen the blowout. How many times K State went down there a few years ago? Was it like fifty-one to nothing, or yeah, yeah. You know, got absolutely destroyed? I mean, that, sure, that's possible. But I think this team is too talented for that. And yeah. and this is going to be a good game. And, and there's just a lot to talk about. But I guess my question to you is: If you are inside of that locker room right now as a player, what is your message to the rest of the team? Well. They have a lot of leaders on the team, offense and defense, and a lot of guys that have been battle tested. And I think, it's, you, I, honestly, it's not going to take a whole lot to get the current guys that we have on the team motivated. Um, they're going to look within themselves, and then it's going to be a, collect, a collective understanding. Hey, guys, we, we let one get away last week. It's a new week. It is what it is. We move forward. Now, here's the situation about this. You're on the road. And me as a player, I can tell you, a lot of teams, when you go on the road, it's nothing better than going to an opponent's field and beating them in front of the home crowd. Mm-hmm. So there's extra motivation. And then it's the Big 12 opener as well. And the fact that we're coming off a loss, there, yeah, there's pressure uh, to get a win. But as a player, there's less pressure on you, in my opinion, as a player to play well in front of your home fans than on the road. And I have tend to notice that, myself included, I played a lot looser on the road than I did at home. So I think these guys are motivated. Yeah, you know, they, they took a, a lot of uh, – negative press this past week because of the the loss to Tulane but I can almost guarantee these guys have been coached up hard they're practicing hard and they're ready to roll and are telling each other hey this is about it's about us nobody else let's go get a win to me this is a game that tests the culture of Chris Kleiman's team because if they go in there they don't even have to win if they go in there and compete 
and they're in it, and it's a less than 10-point game, like it very well could be. I think that says almost more about them than the loss to Tulane, if <laughs> yeah. that makes sense, yeah. right? How they respond to this loss, is to me, is, is everything, right? You know, you're not going to um, win or lose the Big 12 championship with one game, right? No. At the end of the day, that's the goal. Do you want to talk about the pie in the sky and and – somehow making a college football playoff sure that's every player's goal is to win a championship yeah. but you can still win a big 12 championship and if you lose this game it doesn't take you out of that all your goals are still in front of you and even before you play the game all the goals are still in front of you so i think this is going to be a good game but again the defense to me i'm not worried about them no that's that's going to keep k-state in this game now we'll talk about ou here and here in a second they have some playmakers but how do they go about fixing the offense? Because that, to me, is the big question mark. Honestly, and and I wouldn't even say fix the offense. I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But I think because the offense, they, they have the pieces in place. And it, it's just more of a, a mentality and an understanding of this is what we have as far as talent. Now you guys have to go out and execute. I have no doubt that they've been coached up the right way and understand what they're capable of. But they have to understand this as well. You can't wait. Like I said, you know, my coaches always tell me, uh, you have to impose your will. And, and, and imposing your will starts on Sunday night, Monday morning, meetings, training table, getting treatment or whatnot, and preparing throughout the week. So come Saturday, when you are at the game and the game starts, you're ready, you're prepared on uh, either physically and mentally, and you impose your will on Oklahoma. And I think our offense has to say, you know what, our defense has been carrying us. It's our time to carry our weight and win this as a team. One thing we didn't see against Tulane very much was the RPO. No. We saw it quite a bit against Missouri. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're going to see some of that against Oklahoma. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's as simple as, Adrian, you know what? you got to look at one guy. Instead of looking at the whole defense, mm-hmm. you look at one guy. Yep. You know what? If he comes down to defend the run, you throw it. Yep. If he stays back, you hand it off. Absolutely. Simplify everything. If they can do that, I mean, that's at the end of the day, we talked to Cade Warner about it. He said, you know what? Oklahoma, they run multiple defensive fronts. Mm-hmm. Brent Venables is still trying to figure out who he has. Yeah. It yeah. was a mass exodus after Lincoln Riley left. Mm-hmm. He's still trying to figure out what he has. So, yeah, he's going to play different guys. If you look at their depth chart, there's like five or six spots that have a starter and then or and then mm-hmm. another guy. Mm-hmm. It just shows you how much guys, how many guys are playing right yep. now. Yep. So if you're K State, it almost feels like you can just open up your playbook. You can run whatever because you're not necessarily game planning for one specific, uh, one specific defensive scheme. Absolutely, and and that's an advantage for us, Oklahoma. And you know, Oklahoma has a ton of talent, like Oklahoma always does, and like you mentioned. Uh, Coach Venables has several guys playing different spots. Some guys are starters, some guys aren't. They come off the bench, some guys play more. And and it works in our benefit because you haven't they haven't worked cohesively as a group mm-hmm. for three games straight. There's been always different pieces moving around and seeing different offenses. So that helps us out as offense. And like you said, the RPO, if they whoever K State decides to read, be it a linebacker, a nose tackle, an end, whoever it may be, whoever that guy is, more than likely is going to be a stud playing for him. So we don't even want to block him. Take him out the equation. Mm-hmm. You read him. If he comes down, you uh, you 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 keep it. I mean, you give it. If he if he comes comes at you, you you give it. And it's one of those things where you make his job easy, so you can play fast, less thinking, more plays. And I think K State will do that. And on the flip side too, Oklahoma defense flies to the ball, which works in our advantage because we, what do you do? When you get a team that flies to the ball, you run counters, you run screens, and we run great screens with Deuce. You get Deuce out in space, those guys over pursue, he can be out the gate and hopefully have a lot of big scores. So I like our chances against OU going in, and a lot of people don't look at the big picture, but um, we, you know, we're going to be an underdog. But we're okay with that. Mm-hmm. If we would have won last Saturday, we still were going to be underdog. Yeah, so that doesn't change. Anything. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, Oklahoma has not been tested this year. No. And I would, you know what? I would make the argument that K State, the three teams that K State have played, have prepared them for conference play. South Dakota is not a, you know, they're they're an FCS team, yeah. but they're a solid FCS team, right? They're, they're comparable to Nebraska. No, <laughs> that's a, and that's no, exactly where I'm going. Seriously, they're comparable to Nebraska. Yeah. I mean that game against. Nebraska that Oklahoma had was pitiful. It was. I it mean, was, Oklahoma, yeah. Nebraska is so bad, and they, are, yeah. they didn't get pushed at all. No. And then they played. They played UTEP as well, and I love Dana Dimmel, oh, yeah, Dana's K-State my guy. guy yep, but yep. you know, they're not on the same level they as. Are. They're not on the same level as Missouri. They're not on the same level as Tulane. No. K State has prepared the 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 schedule they have in the non conference was actually 
it prepared them for mm-hmm. this. I don't think that Oklahoma is going to see uh, the speed mm-hmm. that K-State has. Yeah. They definitely have not seen the physicality of the defense. You are correct. That's the biggest thing. Oklahoma has scored a lot of points. Mm-hmm against subpar defenses. They have not seen the physicality yes. that Kobe Savage, that Daniel Green, that Josh Hayes, that Felix Inudike, Uzama, the list goes on. They have not seen the physicality. So to me, if K-State comes out and they can hold Oklahoma scoreless for the first few minutes of the game, yeah. that's going to set a tone. Absolutely. And I can guarantee, and I can speak for the whole team, especially for the defense, I know our guys are not intimidated by Oklahoma. I know they've been there, done that, and a lot of people say, oh, oh, you. Our guys are like, okay, yeah, fine, whatever. Another team, they're good, but we're not intimidated by them. And our guys are going to have the attitude is, okay, we took a loss. This is us. We're going to be physical. We're going to hit you every play. And then when we when, when you get up, we're going to hit you again and again. And at the end of the day, hopefully we come out on top. But I like our chances. It's amazing because everybody's going to think that this is going to be a low-scoring game. If K-State's going to stay in this game, people are going to say, oh, you know, they got to hold them to 21 points and, you know, they'll win 24 to 21. But it honestly would not shock me if this is a 31 to 35 game, if somehow this game gets higher scoring than people think. Because, again, Chris Kleiman said this after the game. The defense on Saturday was good. Mm. That day they needed to be great. Yes. Guess what? On Saturday, K-State's going to run into some adversity. They might give up more points than they normally do. So what? guess what? It's up to the offense to step up. Because, you know, against Tulane, it was one of those things where nobody was really stepping up. The defense was good, sure. They, they you know, they did their job. But the now it's the offense's turn to pick it up. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited because I think K-State has an advantage on the defensive side of the yes. ball simply because Oklahoma has not seen this defense. And the list goes on. You know, I, I got my notes right here. Dylan Gabriel, obviously the quarterback for Oklahoma UCF transfer. Mm-hmm. He's kind of a dual threat guy. But in fairness to him, he is not. Spencer Rattler, he's no. not Caleb Williams, no. and he's not Jalen Hurts. Nope. And K-State has beaten Jalen Hurts mm-hmm. and Spencer Rattler. Yep. So, I mean, again, if, if, you're, if you're a K-State fan and, and you're, you're sad about this loss, I get that. But this is going to be a game that people are not going to see coming simply because of the the bias of yeah. last week. I, I think everything K-State has is still in front of them. And I think it's good for us, too. The time slot is perfect, in my opinion. 7 o'clock, night game in Norman, and it's going to be a great environment. And, you know, so Fox is one of those things where um, our guys understand the opportunity in front of them, you know. And it's one of, and like, and like with the win, everything that's happened at this point is forgotten. And they're moving forward into the Big 12. And like you said, once again, we saw the Big 12 on the road goodness knows how many years yeah. this is in a row but we can get a win but i think our guys go in and play the game they can even if it's a close win three points seven points a win is a win and that will basically reset the attitude of the team and hopefully reset the attitude of a lot of fans as well to understand the season's not over it's not how you start it's how you finish and there's a lot of season to go and it is and you're right it starts against oklahoma um we talked about dylan gabriel his main target marvin mims this is crazy leading receiver as a freshman leading receiver as a sophomore he is back as a junior and he is their their big playmaker oh yeah if k-state wants to win this game they've got to find a way to control him but again that plays into K-State's advantage because of we know how good the cornerbacks are for K-State. And so, again, I, I think playing Missouri mm-hmm. earlier in the season against those kind of playmakers yep. has prepared them for this because as much as we want to talk about how bad Missouri was, they might have one of the best receiving cores in the country. And Oklahoma, you throw in Drake Stoops, another one of those guys who's yep. been there for forever. Yep. They have some weapons at the receiver position, but you can make an argument that maybe Missouri's receiving core is even better. I would. I know um, Oklahoma schemes are better, Mm -hmm. but as far as receiving personnel, I I would say as a whole, Missouri receivers are better. And, you know, but but with K-State sees Oklahoma, and like you mentioned, Drake Stoops, he's more of a slot guy, kind of shifty, but he knows – was he he's up against he's seen us enough and we've hit him often <laughs> and he understands that and i guarantee he respects us as a team and he respects the culture obviously because his dad was there and, and and around for so many years and uncle as well but i i like our chances in the past game now linebackers are good we have to be great our dns have to get pressure on the quarterback and our schemes have to be good but i i believe that the team will be prepared, and Coach Klanderman and Coach Kleinman will have those boys defensively ready. Offense is a little different, but defense, I think they'll be ready. That's the spot. I think that's the spot that if K-State's going to win this game, it's going to be because they're going to yeah. be solid, and, and, and the expectation is that they're solid on defense. Mm-hmm. Flipping it over to the offensive side before we finish up and give our predictions uh, for the K-State.
State Wildcats and the Oklahoma Sooners. Offensively, is this the game where Adrian Martinez comes out of his shell and becomes the quarterback that everybody thinks he can be? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. We will see. But I, I think, well, I know he understands this game can determine his future moving forward. And when I say about that, it can catapult him into one of the better quarterbacks in the Big 12 and continue to get better around a team that's established. Or it could also just set him back another week with people saying, same old Adrian from Nebraska, you know, this and that. And 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 the people are going to call for the – uh, the Ruby kid, which pump your brakes, guys. Yeah. Red shirt fresh. <laughs> exactly. Pump your brakes. I'm pretty sure he'll be good one day, yeah. but he's not ready. Yeah. So, but I think Adrian understands the task at hand and uh, he's mature enough to, to, uh, to move forward and prepare for a game. And hopefully he's ready to shine because he has played Oklahoma before in a hostile environment and, and he'll be ready. I think that's a big, that's a big thing. Um, he's played it and he played at Norman last year. Yep. I mean, that's, I think that's something I asked him about that at the press conference. I'm like, does this, you know, is this a factor? He's like, well, guys have been asking me about it. And you know what? I, I, I'm of the belief that this K-State team still, like I've, like I've said so many times, has everything still in front of them. You know what? Even if they don't win, if they play well, you're 2-2, two and two, but you feel good about yourself because you know that you've bounced back from that loss. And there's no such thing as moral victories in college football. Uh, you know that. I know that. Mm-hmm. It's about winning at the end of the day, but... Um, this feels like a game where K State has to make some improvement, just simply to wipe that, the wipe the slate clean and get the bad taste out of their mouth. Yeah, I hate I hate the term, and I'm gonna use it, but I hate the term a must win. But it is almost a must win because it's early and it it won't dictate our whole season. But a win this weekend is so significant for so many reasons. So hopefully we can get it together and be ready to play. But, you know, it's, it's an important win. It's huge. It's an important game. Yeah. It, is, it is massive, and, and it'll be fun. Like you mentioned, 7 o'clock on Fox, primetime kickoff. I doubt they're going to be in alternate uniforms. Oh, yeah. I, I, can, I can almost guarantee that will not happen. So it'll be fun to watch. It'll be a great game. Now for our predictions. I'll let you go first on this one. All right. You Well, you mentioned 24-21, I believe, earlier. I was leaning towards 28-21 Cats. That's it. That's what you got? That's it. All right. You're picking K-State to win. I, I As much as I want to pick K-State to win because I think that they have a very good chance, yeah. I think they're going to be in it right to the end. And, and I don't think – put it this way. If K-State loses, I don't think it's going to be because anything they do – I'll give the advantage to Oklahoma simply because they are at home. They're a good team. And they're a very good team, number six in the country. So um, I'll say Oklahoma. You said 28-21 K-State. I'll say Oklahoma 31-28. Like I said, I think it'll be a good game. And I could even see, you know, potential overtime, something like that. Um, The spread is 13. We both are in agreement that K-State covers. Yes. I think it's going to be a really close game. So either way, it'll be fun. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the Friday Walkthrough. I'm Cole Carmody. That's Monty Spiller, sponsored by the Part-Time Beverage Company. Make sure you're hitting subscribe on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast, as well as at GoPowerCat.com. I'll be in Norman. He'll be watching the game. Yep. It'll be fun. Make sure you're tuning in on Saturday night, and we will talk to you next Friday. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.